Hey everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials on YouTube and Facebook. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our tutorials. Today I'm going to be showing you how to sublimate an ombre pint glass. We're going to do it in a convection oven with a full wrap design around the top rim of it. I'm really excited for this. Um, I just sort of had the idea and decided I could probably figure out how to make it work for a tutorial. So you guys are going to be on this journey for me because it's my first time using these glasses. Now, um, these glasses are sold as a pair. I purchased them from Single J Sublimation and you can get them in a variety of different colors. I think there's purple, pink, red, yellow, blue, and green. Um, don't don't hold me to that. There may be other colors in there as well. I know that I purchased five uh, eight, nine months ago. I've had them for a while and I'm just now getting to use them. Now, these ombre pint glasses, they're frosted and they're really, really nice quality. You guys will see them in just a minute. And um, they are really nice quality. They're very thick, very durable. And they are the perfect item to use for gift sets. Now, we have Mother's Day, Father's Day, wedding season, and soon the holiday season all coming up fast. This year has flown by so far. And it's important for you to start thinking about what is going to give you maximum profits going into this fourth quarter of the year. I know we're not quite there yet, but it is going to be here soon. We are in a recession, so I know a lot of you are dealing with lower sales, and that is completely normal for a recession, but you can help yourself best by putting out the best kind of products that entice your customers. Gift sets is, in fact, an answer to that. When we think about the holiday season, we often think about the fact that there are tons of gift sets in stores, and even though many of us don't necessarily want them, there are tons more people that do. Those gift sets sell out most years in stores, and they continue to be put back every single year because people actually buy them and want them. What's interesting about gift sets is that they solve a problem for the person that's buying them. The person that's buying them wants to give a nice gift. They want it to be a whole gift. They don't want just one item that they're going to have to add to. They want to just grab a set and be done and hope that the person who receives it is going to love it. When we make handmade products, we have the ultimate ability to create cool curated gift sets by simply taking one item and then pairing it with a bunch of other cheaper items that we don't have to print and then turning it into a gift set. So for something like these drinkware items, we can pair them with uh, a six pack of soda. We can pair them with um, a beer caddy, beer bottle caddy. You can pair it with a bottle opener. You could pair it with a t-shirt. You could do a beer and like a brews and grilling type of theme, add grilling spices. I know that for me, the one that we're making today, I'm going to pair this with some of my mom's favorite uh, syrups, like skinny syrups that you add to water or lemonade. She loves those. So that's going to be a cute little gift set that I put together for her with this. And that's just one of many ideas that you could possibly come up with. Try and think outside the box and think about what kind of items pair well with a drink. Just because it's a pint glass doesn't mean it's for beer. It can be used for literally any type of beverage. And when you start approaching it that way and thinking about the kinds of items you can pair it with, you are able to increase your profits. If one of these glasses with your paper and accounting for your electricity usage and things like that costs you roughly we'll say $10 for one. Um, when you pair this with maybe five to $8 worth of other random items, items that you are not necessarily printing yourself, items that you know you can pick up at the Dollar Tree and things like that, you can then wrap them up nicely and create a gift set that you can easily sell for 45 or $50. Think of it like that. Think of a gift set idea and start creating them together. You can always offer just the glass on its own as well. The retail for these is $15 to $20, depending on if they're personalized. Personalized, of course, always sells for more money. Um, but gift sets is definitely going to be the hot ticket thing that you're going to want to focus on going into this holiday season. People are looking to spend less and still make an impact with the types of gift that they give. And you can do that by creating really beautiful gift sets, decorating them nicely and making them more appealing to your customers.
We're going to be using Affinity Photo today. So this is a first for us for to use Affinity Photo with a tutorial, but that is so that we can leverage the Mesh Warp and Perspective Warp tools. So let's go ahead and head over to the computer and we will get started. We are going to be using Affinity Photo for this tutorial, uh, which is a bit of a change of pace for us since Affinity Designer is my normal go-to. However, Affinity Designer does not currently have any type of warp tool, and that is why we are leveraging Affinity Photo today. I want to be able to use both the Mesh Warp tool and the Perspective Warp tool with the template provided. Now, the template is available below, and this is tailored for these 17 ounce ombre pint glasses. Keep in mind that glasses can be different from every manufacturer. They may be slightly different in terms of size. So you always want to print your finished uh, template on a piece of copy paper with your regular daily printer, not your sublimation ink, so that you can cut it out and measure it around and make sure that it's where it needs to be before you print your sublimation design. So really important because you got to have that flush wrapped around. I've already tested this, so I know that this one works perfectly. If you enjoyed this little sneak peek into using Affinity Photo and want to learn everything there is to do with this software, please come join the Affinity Photo Digital Graphic Design Masterclass for Sublimation. This is a 75 plus hour course that you can learn on your own schedule in your own time. And it covers everything that this software can do from photo editing and manipulation to creating completed designs and roster elements. Affinity Photo is very powerful. And I often get the question of whether it's best to have either designer or photo. And in my opinion, there's room for both. It really just depends on what you plan on doing. You can use the code sub that to save $30 on that course following the link below. You are going to want to download the template that is attached for 17 ounce pint glasses. You'll find a version for Affinity plus a PNG and a PSD version or a PDF version so that you can use them across different platforms as well if you have other tools available. Some programs that have a mesh warp tool include um, Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator, as well as Silhouette. Now, I normally don't recommend Silhouette, but it does have a conical warp tool, which is perfect for this type of project. Now, once you have that downloaded and unzipped, we're going to get started. We will go to File and then Open, and you want to make sure you choose the template for Affinity. And then click OK. Next, we are going to import the graphic which we would like to place on our glass. I will go to File and Place, and I'm gonna choose these sunflower borders that I am listing on my website tonight. So if you happen to catch this tomorrow or later on, it will already be available, as well as the cheetah ones with both the cheetah middles and the cheetah petals. Um, all of this is just from my sunflower that I created. I wanted to create a digital element that you guys can use, and this is an element that you can use on its own or within other digital designs, so a great value there. I'm gonna choose this one that has the bee and the ladybug and click OK. When we see the down arrow with the little portal, you simply click and it will drop in your design. Now I want to make this the width of my measurements, the diameter that we got or the circumference that we got of our glass plus one quarter inch. So that means that since the circumference of the top part of our glass was 11 inches, we are going to set this to 11.25 as our width. Before we uh, change our measurements, always make sure that your aspect ratio is locked. When it's locked, you see those little arms. Go ahead and hit enter. Now I wanna center this on my page. So I'm going to come up here to my alignment tool and choose align center, and then simply hit apply. Next, I want my sunflowers to be facing down and so that this will sort of come down the glass since I'm doing it from the top. So I'm going to come to arrange and choose flip vertical. Now I wanna line this up with the top of my template. It's gonna be easiest if we turn down the opacity. So I'm coming to the opacity section in my layers panel and setting that at 50%. Next, I'm gonna bring this down so that I am 
right on the line of this dome part here, right in the middle. So you can see that we have to warp it to make it fit this. But that's our starting point is right at the top, right in the middle. So this middle guide is there for your reference to make sure that everything is lining up accordingly. Next, we're gonna come down to our warp tools, This is which is right above your zoom tool in your tools panel. I'm gonna select perspective tool first. With my perspective tool, I just have these four corner node adjustments, and I'm going to simply bring them in along this diagonal line that I have here. Now you'll notice that this bottom one is just about in line with this line that we have here, and that's perfect. So we're just gonna click on that one node, keep it straight, bring it on in, and line it right up on top of that curve. Having your snapping guides on can help you line things up better, so make sure that magnet is selected. Now I'm gonna do the same on the other side, but on this side, this section that you see here is for a flap to overlap. I want this to be seamless, so I'm not gonna bring it all the way to this outside edge, I'm gonna bring it right in the middle, and that should be just about perfect that the pages will just barely overlap um, so that we can get that seamless look. So we want to try and do our best to make that happen, which again is why you should print this on copy paper once you have it set up and readjust it as necessary to get that perfect, flush, seamless look that you are going for. Putting it on copy paper and uh, wrapping it around, cutting it out and wrapping it around will save you a lot of stress before you end up pressing your design. So I'm going to bring this other one in. And I'm going to bring it in just on that inside edge of that flap, just like that. So I'm not quite in the middle. I'm just kind of on the other side of being in the middle. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see better at the top. And now I want to bring this one in and I want to bring it right in line where that line is right there. So just bring it right on down. And line it up. And then come over to my other side, and I want this one to come right down to that corner. Now I do want to make sure that I haven't gone too far in. It looks like I did right here, so I'm actually going to bring that out so that I'm right on top of the line there. And it looks like we're pretty good here. We'll just zoom out. Yeah, it looks like everything's just about right. So once you have that set with those four nodes adjusted, you're going to click Apply. What I want you to look for now is how far you have adjusted your design, this section here, where it's falling from the top. So these extra lines that are all in here are to give you a reference point for exactly that. We can see that we've gone about one and three quarters down from this top part. So we're going to adjust from our bottom one and three quarters up. So we're gonna select this and, and select our mesh warp tool now. Now the mesh warp tool gives you a lot more flexibility than just those rigid corners, which is perfect for adding this arc that we need. We wanna make sure that we are clicking right in the middle on this line that's here, and we are simply going to click and drag until it is all the way up to touching the edge of our template. And again, you really wanna make sure that you're staying on that middle guideline. That's how we're gonna have the best accuracy. Now notice that my sunflowers look a little stretched out. That's because we need to bring up the bottom and that's what we were looking for when we saw our one and three quarters roughly estimate. Keep in mind that it doesn't need to be an exact uh, push up from the bottom. It just needs to be as close as you possibly can uh, to give it the most seamless and original look. So same thing, I'm gonna select that bottom line and this is this line right here. That's my mesh warp, um, guidelines. And I'm already up a little bit, so I'm pretty much just going to bring it up to just past the halfway mark of the second line. So one, and just about at the halfway mark here is going to get me that um, same amount of arc that I got for my top. And looking at this, this looks pretty even. I don't think I could ask for better. So I'm going to assume that I've got it as accurate as I can and call it good. Now, the only thing I'm noticing is just this little bit right here. So I'm actually going to take this 
and I'm just going to pull it up just a hair just so we're at that line so I can really try and have the best um, the best fill for this wraparound. Pretty easy to use both of these tools. Once you have that mesh warp constraints set, go ahead and click apply. Now you can set your opacity back up to 100% and we can actually um, open up a new document to get this ready to print. So my rule of thumb is to always open a document that's the size you plan on printing. So I'm going to go to File and New, and I'm just gonna come over to that Print section and I'm going to choose Letter Size. This particular um, template design that we made is just barely under 11 inches. So if we put it at a diagonal on the page, it will fit on this page and we can print on it. If it wouldn't fit, we would use 11 by 17 paper instead. So with that eight and a half by 11 selected, I wanna make sure that my color format is set for sublimation to RGB slash eight and my color profile is sRGB IEC 61966-2.1. This is the most current color profile for graphic design. Some people do still prefer to use Adobe 1998 um, or Adobe RGB 1998. If that is the one that works best for your document setup, then go for it. That is the older one. This is the newer one. The newer one is um, considered superior in terms of printing. So that is why we choose it for sublimation. Now, keep in mind that an ICC profile, that profile that may have been provided to you by your ink or printer company, that is not relevant to your document setup. That is in your printer settings. It has nothing to do with these settings right here. So make sure that this is what you have set and then go ahead and click Create. Now we're simply gonna copy and paste our sunflower over to that other page. So right click on it in your layers panel, select copy, come over to this page, select your move tool, right click and select paste or use control or command V. Then I'm just gonna rotate it like this so it fits on my paper and I'm ready to print. We can print by going to file and then print. Now I'm using my Workforce 7710 today, but don't forget what I said, that if you, um, if this is your first time and you have a different glass and you wanna make sure it all fits, make sure you print it to your daily printer first and cut it out and make sure it fits before you print your sublimation version. That way you're not wasting paper and sublimation ink and you're also not pressing a substrate that's not you know ready to go perfectly. I have already tested this out multiple times, so I am just gonna skip right to printing it on my sublimation printer. I've got my Workforce 7710 here, and then I will select Properties and choose my appropriate settings. Now I have presets here, which you can add your own as well by selecting that Add Remove Presets option. So I'm just gonna choose my subprint letter. This already has my settings for my printer and in ink. I use Printer Jack Ink with my Workforce 7710. We of course want our image to be mirrored as well. If you have any ICC profiles or things like that, those are selected underneath your color correction advanced options um, or in your print settings. You need to contact your ink supplier for guidance with that. That's not something that we cover here because there are so many different scenarios. Um, or so many different profiles which people are using. With my ink, it uses the native uh, Epson print, Epson default ICC profile, so I don't have any of those extra steps to do, and I just keep my print settings set in, which is that high quality plain paper with high quality turned on. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and then click OK again, and it's going to send it off to print. So now that we have this printing, let's pop on back to our workbench so that we can cut it out and get it wrapped around our glass. Okay, so we have our transfer that we just printed. Keep in mind that we didn't measure this because I created that template based on these measurements, but you always want to adjust the template based on your measurements, just in case you have glasses from elsewhere. And this approach does apply to all sublimation pint glasses that are 17 ounce. You can follow this video for all of that. Um, it doesn't really matter if they're frosted or clear. 
um, it'll all be the same. The only thing will be adjusting that template accordingly. So make sure you print it on some regular old copy paper with your regular printer first and cut it out and make sure that it wraps around. I already did that, of course, because I didn't want to have to adjust it if I didn't, you know, on the video. <laughs> so you're going to need scissors to cut out your um, transfer, heat tape, shrink wrap, and heat gloves, and of course your convection toaster oven. I currently have mine warming up at 410 degrees. Um, I'm going a little bit over the 400 because mine tends to have some cool spots, but 400 is what is recommended. And the recommendation is 10 to 13 minutes. So a little long will actually just fade out and fade back in for that time so that I don't have to run my mouth the whole time. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start by cutting this off. You wanna make sure you get nice and close on your edges here. You can leave one with a little bit of white for the overlap to make it easy to tape if you would like. So I'll do that on this side. And then it doesn't really matter how you do around here, just cut that off and then get right on up to it here. And then we wanna cut along that arc. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Try and get it as close as possible without cutting any of it off. Okay. I'm using 15 ounce mug shrink wrap for this, by the way. The, um, the one for the uh, tumblers does not fit these pint glasses. They're too wide. So the 15 ounce one for coffee mugs is perfect. All right, so then you're gonna take your transfer and get it lined right up. Make sure you pay attention to the edge that you have the flap on so you don't put that one underneath because you want it to overlap just like that. And assuming everything has measured correctly, you should have this lined right up on the top there. Hold it down. Hold it down on one side, get it really nice and snug. Make sure that your paper is lined up right up where it's lapping there. I'm holding it here. And then look inside and you can see where you're at. See how you can't really tell that I'm overlapping right there? That means we did a bang up job getting that perfect for our measurements, perfectly wrapped right there. Now, before I tape it, we're looking for there to make sure that we have all even pressure all the way around. It looks like we do. We don't have any gaps in our paper. We don't have any um, accidental, accidental crinkles. Everything's flush. It's got to be flush. It should be perfectly flush all the way down your glass. You got to make sure you check for that. Now, again, I'm going to hold this one side. This is my side with the flap. I'm going to pull it nice and tight and bring it overlapping. You want to make sure you get it nice and tight. Then I can put my paper on, making sure. I got it nice and tight. My tape on, not my paper. <laughs> we already got the paper. And then that one as well. Always double check again, make sure we got everything nice and tight. We do check how our seam is looking. I mean, this is gonna look pretty cool. I was actually planning on doing this on the yellow one, but then when I lined it up with this blue one, the blue one was gonna be for the Country and Sun's logo and the yellow one was gonna be for these, but then I saw how pretty this blue looked with these sunflowers and I was like, ooh, I gotta do that. So this is our overlap, and if we look, let's see, yep. Looks pretty good, right? Can't even tell. Even in person, because um, I know the video's not necessarily always the best. Um, even in person, it's nearly impossible to see that subtle line. That's great, that's what we want. I'm gonna put one more piece of tape on for safe measure because I'm neurotic, being completely honest here. And now I'm going to take my shrink wrap and I'm going to place it over top of this. And what I like to do with bigger shrink wrap is place it over top and then sort of fold it down like this. So if you didn't see, I sort of pinched it like this and then fold it over. I just do this while I'm heating it to try and get it as best that I can. It's most important that we have nice even pressure. This will all shrink down. And I've got my heat gun right here. It doesn't reach very far, so you may or may not be able to see much of this. Oh, well, it looks like it'll reach far enough. 
always start with that edge that's overlapping. The reason being is because if this overlaps and your paper looks like it's crinkled, you're gonna want to try again. This is a very low powered heat gun from Amazon. Nothing special here. I think it was like 12 bucks. It's linked in the comments. Go around your edge next. Get nice and tight. And then bring it on down. And just shrink it as much as you possibly can. With these low powered ones, you're not gonna get like this extra part super shrunk. It'll shrink the rest of the way in the oven and that's fine. You just wanna do the best that you can. Always make sure you hit the edge good in particular. All right. I think we're about as good as we're gonna get there. Now, the most important thing that we're looking for and this is true of all drinkware when you're using shrink wrap, is you wanna make sure that you don't see any wrinkles in your paper along your edge where this is wrapping over. If you do, that means your paper is crinkling and you're gonna get, you're gonna get lines like these. This is from your paper crinkling as that shrink wrap is pulling it over the edge. You don't want that, very important. Of course, if you use a tumbler press, you're more likely to avoid that from happening. All right, so we have our toaster oven here. Doo -doo -doo. I'm just using a Black & Decker convection toaster oven. This one's a few years old. I did purchase it from Walmart. I'm sure they have like newer models out right now, but um, I have had this one for a hot minute. So I'm gonna open it up. Oh, it doesn't look like it's gonna fit that way. So I am going to put it down on its side like this and hope for the best. <laughs> so this is my first time doing these. So we will see what happens. <laughs> Um, all right, so we are gonna do this for 12 minutes, and that is quite some time that I don't have 12 minutes worth of stuff to say. I'm going to set my timer for 12 minutes though, and um, we can talk for a moment about creating gift sets with these. I've mentioned before that gift sets are an excellent way to boost the profitability of any of your drinkware items whether you sell them in sets of two with cute little add-ons like a coffee gift card or a, a waffle towel that's coffee themed or even coffee beans. Or in this case, you could always use uh, drink mixes, sodas, things of that nature that you can legally sell. Keep in mind that in most states, you can't just go sell gift sets with beer included. <laughs> um, but there are plenty of non-alcoholic options you can choose. And you can always make it a set with something like a two glasses and a bottle opener, um, a t-shirt and a glass, really just anything that falls into that beer lovers category. Pretty easily by doing that, you are going to up the value of your item. And most importantly, customers love gift sets. So by creating a gift set that takes all of the work out of it for them, you will win points and improve sales. You know those holiday gift sets that we see all the time at Christmas time? And you probably think, oh my gosh, don't have someone give one of those to me. The reason why those still exist is because there are people who love them and they get given as gifts every single year because people like the convenience. As a small business, we can do a lot for our business and for our customers by creating those gift sets. I'm gonna go ahead and fade out and we will fade back in when this is about ready. So as I said, we are doing this at 400 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes is what's recommended. So I'm just gonna split the difference and do 12 minutes. And I'm doing 410 because my oven does run a little bit cooler. This is one of those things that you will have to test out with your own convection oven to get the results. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I ended up going for 14 minutes for mine. Um, as I mentioned, you're aiming for somewhere between 12 and, or 10 and 15 minutes is what's recommended. You may have to trial and error based on your convection toaster oven, so just be prepared for that. But here's a little trick to make sure, just to let you know if you need to add a little bit more time. When you peek into your shrink wrap, I already kind of popped it, um, when I checked it, but when you peek in and you can see a nice good transfer of your design on the inside, that lets you know that it's ready to go. If that doesn't look nice and vibrant, then it needs to bake longer. 
your design is going to look darker inside the glass than on the outside of the glass because on the inside of the glass it's the glass is clear the frosted coating is on the outside and the ink is permeating that frosted coating so it's going to look darker inside than it does outside um, but so by checking in there, you can see if you need to maybe give it a couple more minutes. Maybe your convection oven needs you to rotate it. I didn't do any of that. I just did mine at 410 for 14 minutes. I've also let this cool for about 15 minutes. So that's why we faded out for this tutorial. Usually I just do everything straight through, but I don't have 25 minutes worth of something to talk about <laughs> with this. So you want to make sure that anytime you're using shrink wrap on glass that you do let it cool reasonably before you try and take it off. The reason is because that transfer, if that transfer like pops back and then touches the glass again, that ink is still going to be processing because of the heat that the glass absorbed and you can end up popping it back on and even for just a second or two, you will end up with some type of ghosting shadow. So to avoid that, let this cool as much as possible. This is not 100% to touch yet, but it's definitely not piping hot. Like I can certainly pick it up. It's not like it's 400 degrees still. I'm still gonna wear my gloves and I'm gonna go ahead and peel off my shrink wrap. My shrink wrap is kind of failing me at the moment, so I'm gonna grab a box cutter. I do like to use a box cutter, but I recommend great caution if you decide to do it yourself. Just because you don't wanna ever scratch the coating on your glass. So my rule of thumb is to always um, box cut along where I know paper is overlapping. So just a little bit there. All right, well, I got the paper separated. There we go. Getting a little bit more of that shrink wrap. I'm gonna be really gentle with this one. This particular um, box cutter is actually kind of dull. Okay, let me switch my hands here. All right, it's still a little bit warm, but check it out. So there's our seam. We're not gonna get it perfect. Um, with this process because we do have that overlap. Uh, I think maybe if you run your nail along that seam, it might help that a little bit, but it's lined up as good as we could expect, especially for sublimation. Keep in mind, always have realistic expectations when you are printing. Um, that seamless look that we occasionally see in the store, we don't see it all the time, but we do see it sometimes. That's done through either pad printing, which pad printing, if you've never seen it, is like this giant blob that's like, it would be huge, it'd be like this big, and it would dip down on the ink pattern, and then it'd pop back up, and it dips down over this, sort of like, just like a rubbery blob that just goes down and coats the whole glass. That's how it gives a seamless look. Also, UV printing and dip dye printing. Dip dye printing is where, it's hydro dipping, um, is where you have like a big vat of water with your ink, and then usually the drinkware item is dipped down in and brought back up. Those printings are not, do not have the longevity that sublimation does, which is why it's important to remember the limitations of our printing just the same and have realistic expectations. All right, this is almost cool. So I'm just gonna give this another spin. I love how this came out. I'm honestly thrilled with it. And we can see our inside looks really beautiful as well. The blue was such a good choice for this. Ah, I'm pretty happy with this. I hope you guys will give it a try. These. Um, Border elements, as I mentioned, will be up on my website of loveandshiplap.us. And these elements are for their borders, but you can use them for your own digital designs. I've actually used them for plenty of my own, including a, let's see, I did some pillows um, and I did some doormats with it last year. And I'm working on some more things now. I just wanted to set it down. 
but there you have it. Oh, this looks beautiful. For my first time, I think this came out pretty good. So I hope you guys will give these ombre glasses a try. They are a lot of fun and honestly not too difficult. The most difficult part, of course, was just getting that design, but we did awesome. We don't have any areas where we had wrinkling. We don't have any areas where we didn't have even pressure other than our seam, which is be to be expected. So all in all, I am calling this one a win. I look forward to seeing you guys on our next tutorial. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel or join our Facebook group so that you can keep up with all of our latest tutorials and projects here in SubThat.